Hello everybody, my name is Mike and I am an in-house consultant here at The Profs. And in today's video, I get to talk about how to write a good personal statement for computer science. Now, it's obviously one of the most important parts of your application, whether you're going for an undergraduate or even a postgraduate uh, degree. So we cannot rush this, considering that it, it takes the most amount of time at the very least from my experience, to be able to get this right. It makes sense for us to make a video like this, even on a varying amount of different subjects. So I'm very happy to be able to give my top tips for how I think a dissertation for the subject should be written. For now, here are my top tips on how to do well when writing a dissertation of this kind. Uh, my first tip, getting a really, really strong narrative down. So. You want to be thinking in your head, what is my overall motivation to do in computer science, whether that's undergraduate or postgraduate, it cannot just be you like computers and you like working with programming, because that is a baseline fundamental motivation. Um, if you are thinking about hierarchy of motivational needs, um, then you want to be going with a level of motivation that makes it sound like if you did not do a degree in computer science, then your whole future plans would be on halt. Now, I know that sounds a little bit extreme, but actually for the best personal statements out there, we have people who have very, very clear directions for where they want to take their degree. So for instance, I could say in particular, you know, generally, let's have a student A and student B. Student A can say in particular, that he really likes working with computers. He's done so since he was very, very young, and he's been very, very interested in the way that algorithms have been created and designed in order to get computers to work. And I'm like, well, that is kind of cool, but it doesn't really tell me why you want to do a computer science degree. So let's have a look at maybe what person B would say in comparison to that. They could still say that they like these things, but if they said instead, I am really, really fascinated by the development of computers over the last 70 years, as written about by this person. I would be very, very keen to explore its history more um, and the sort of development of quantum computing, um, which is really, really heavily evolving through doing a computer science degree. I'm like, wow, that really sets students apart from others. So. You want to be thinking really, really carefully about why you want to do a degree in this subject. I'd also have to say, with any application, your grades have got to be good. So if you are going in for an undergraduate degree, you want an A star in computer science. And if you want to know how to do that, I actually give some of my tips on how to get a grade like that in this video here, if you are interested in watching that. But if you are a postgrad student, you want to be aiming for a first these days. It's unfortunately one of the more competitive subjects that are out there simply because every industry needs a good computer scientist. And in order to really be competitive and stand up from the crowd, you really need those grades to reflect your ambitions and your academic curiosity. So really, really don't, 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 please don't um, slack off when it comes to your revision for exams and actually getting the grades that you need to really progress in something like this. Another subject that that counts for is mathematics. And this is something that people really miss out on quite regularly. I would even go as far to, as to say that computer science is an applied mathematics. There's no way of escaping it. Um, the way that we do our analysis in terms of how quick algorithms run for, looking at optimizing, maybe looking at optimizing like critical pathways or maybe looking at the amount of storage by doing bit arithmetic. Um, that does come from a mathematical background or at least a mathematical way of thinking, even when it comes to distinguishing between the different effects of logical circuits um, when it comes to computer architecture. We need to be aware of where maths comes into play and more so for the people who are already aware of that they need to know that you have a good level of competency when it comes to maths so that you yourself can make that connection when you learn about it. So 
With undergraduate students, we are going to be looking at admissions tests. So the TMUA is a really, really popular one. You've got to get nailed. Um, and then on top of that, with our postgraduate applications, I'm going to be specifically looking at mathematical modules that you've taken or online courses that you've taken in mathematics to build up on that mathematical repertoire. In particular areas such as discrete mathematics, we're looking at optimization, we're looking at linear algebra, we're looking at statistics, well, it may be even looking at a bit of calculus in there, um, or mathematical logic at the very least. It also depends on what area of computer science you want to do. So once you work that out, you can work out what maths is relevant and you can incorporate evidence of that within your application. Moving on to another aspect of the personal statement that is really, really important is supercurriculars. So I think it's impossible to have a standout person in computer science if they have not done anything in terms of hackathons or competitions or projects outside of their curriculum. I want to see some evidence that they've really, really engaged in an application of computer science in a way that's had an actual effect on the wider community in some way or has an application to something that could be developed further. It may end up being that even as an undergraduate student, you've engaged in external research projects or you're doing an internship with a company that needs computer scientists where you've been able to, say, develop some parallel programming algorithm in Python in order to maximize uh, the speed or minimize the speed rather of their daily operations. If you can do that and you can sort of connect it with the academic side of your degree and you also have your referees sort of backing you up in those areas too, we'll talk about those in a bit, then you can create a really, really strong personal statement. And this is a bonus tip here. Your personal statement is not obviously the only thing that admissions tutors are going to be looking in at or looking in on. We are also going to be looking at references too. So your references are written by people who you should, you should trust, who know of your experience, who know of your strengths and weaknesses. We do talk about them in many, many other videos, but what you want to do is make sure that you have good relationships with them and they can write about you very, very strongly and objectively in support of your personal statements. So make sure you foster those connections very well. If you're in school, that's going to be with your teachers. Make sure you keep them happy. On top of everything that we've just talked about already in terms of personal statements, what are we missing uh, with that? Well, um, we've already talked about the strengths of academics. We've already talked about um, sort of more motivation. I'm not really talking about career plans at all with this or like futures beyond your degree. I want, to, I want to personally really, really know why you want to study computer science in the long term. What's its effect going to be? So I, I don't just want to know from an academic perspective why you like it and what knowledge you want to develop. I also want to know what you're going to be using it for in the future. And that often involves creating a five-year career plan. Um, now, for postgraduate students, this is going to be way more detailed than for um, pers well, prospective, rather, undergraduate students. So it's going to, if you're in high school or in secondary school, I wouldn't be worrying too much about the specifics of writing a plan like this. Um, but I would be thinking about what eventually I want to be in the future. For me, when I was a student, I wanted to be a university professor. I didn't end up becoming one, but actually I'm doing a job at the moment that is very reflective of the values that I wanted to incorporate in a future job. Universities are not expecting you to uphold to the letter what you write down on a personal statement. It's just got to be true to what you want to do or what you are thinking at this current time with this current mindset. So the, above anything else, they want people who are ambitious, who want to make the most of their time and want to make the most of their futures. So show evidence of that, maybe do a bit of research, go into LinkedIn, have a look at people who are graduating from the universities, reach out to a couple of examples and see how they've made those transitions 
And then you might get a better idea or a better understanding as to how they've really used their degrees in a meaningful and impactful way. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear some discussions from you. Um, otherwise, if you think that this video is gonna be useful for your friends or family, please share it. If you've liked it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna get in touch with a tutor like me or any one of our subject experts on this, then please have a look at the information on screen and make sure you get in contact. And as always, best of luck with your application.